On September 28, 1983, the New York Times ran a piece about how video game manufacturer Atari dumped around 14 truckloads worth of cartridges of their colossal $301 million failure, E.T. the Game, in the New Mexico desert under the cover of nighttime. The story remained unverified for almost 30 years, swirling as myth and mystery, with some saying that millions of copies were dumped, and others not believing the story at all. It was one of the weirdest and most interesting gaming urban legends, until 2013 when Zach Penn and his documentary crew decided to go searching for those long lost carts, confirming once and for all if it was real or not. Excavation started on April 24th, 2014, and just a few days later, over 1,000 copies of E.T. were recovered from deep under the sands in New Mexico. There's an estimated 700,000 still buried, but those first thousand were the safe ones to get. I know this story is old news, but something that has always bothered me since Penn's Microsoft-funded excavation efforts and related documentary is how those packages and game cartridges sat for over 30 years without a single inch of decomposition. Outside of being a little tattered and crushed, the boxes were good enough to be sold on eBay and kept in museums. Just think about the rest of the boxes sitting under the sands, unable to be cycled back into the earth. And then multiply that by every physical game that has ever been produced. What video game production alone is doing to our planet is a pretty scary thought. So yeah, welcome to the ethics of buying games my new show about the different ways of buying games and the impact that they have on many different aspects of life. This episode is about the sustainability of physical game copies and, uh, well, I'm sorry in advance. Something I want to make very clear right away is that this video isn't aiming to make anyone feel guilty or to blame you for your consumption habits. It's more to point out what's been happening, what's currently going on, and the future of video game production sustainability. Given that the modern landscape for buying games contains a fair amount of unscrupulous business practices, I get the appeal of buying physical copies. Having a game box in your hand is cathartic. It's a tangible proof of purchase that is unequivocally yours and not on loan, like certain digital storefronts. And that is both satisfying and reassuring. But everything has a cost. So the question I want to start with is this. What is that cost? It is a bummer that this needs to be said, but climate change is real and video game manufacturing is playing a major part in the escalation of the problem. I'm not going to go through all the major ways our consumption is having an impact on our environment, the climate, animals, and ultimately us, because I think at this point, if you don't believe experts on the subject, I don't see how I'll be changing your mind. And if you do believe it all, as you should, then you don't need me to remind you. Instead, let's go back to talking about the story of E.T. on the Atari 2600. Most notably, all those still intact boxes, and just how many copies are still buried deep underground. Now, I want you to think about every unsuccessful game you've ever been cautioned out of purchasing that is sitting out there. All of those millions of unsold copies worldwide, sent straight to a landfill, that get no special story or interesting urban myth. Instead, they're just left alone, forgotten to the world, in a giant pile of garbage, never decomposing. Further still, even the most successful titles in the world do eventually stop selling copies and something needs to be done with those unsold units. So they join their less well-received contemporaries in the same stagnant fate, sitting eternally, piling up more and more as the years go by. When it comes to production, there is no single point in the cycle that is to blame either, meaning there is no one catch-all solution to the issue. On top of that, video game production has no ethical standard requirements set in place. From the plants that assemble discs and cartridges, the cases and the shrink wrap that seals them upon purchase, to the wastage once disposed of, not to mention the CO2 emitted in the transportation of importing and exporting, physical media is not the most eco-friendly consumer item on the market. With video games being immensely more popular than any other form of entertainment on the planet in terms of copies sold, it's hard to deny the impact that they're having on the environment. Despite the rise in digital sales increasing every year, and with more games being tied to subscription-based services, Physical sales are still a very real and very popular thing, especially with more and more excessive collector's editions being rolled out year after year for major tentpole titles. I've spent a couple of weeks trying to find hard data on just how much waste these production cycles produce, but surprise surprise, this information is incredibly hard to come by. All of this isn't to say the games industry has just been sitting on their hands avoiding any corporate liability whatsoever, far from it. Remember when every game came with a thick ass manual? They held information, fun bits of lore, and even helpful tips on how to progress in a game. I think, yeah, those things. I used to love mine, especially my copy of Mega Man X that had a few pages at the back to write down progress codes in a time before widespread saving. They were neat little additions to the complete package of purchasing a game. Well, as it turns out, paper is like super bad for the environment. Who knew? In a time before the war on plastic straws, paper was public enemy number one. 
Growing up in the mid-90s to early 2000s, almost every single kids show had some kind of message about how we need to save the rainforest and reduce our paper usage. Eventually this push hit the games industry and at the time, for years in fact, I hated this. It felt like a cheap tactic to cut costs and rob us of some of the enjoyment. Yet, as much as it pains me to say, I was once an entitled capital G gamer TM. As it turns out, either by a genuine decision to go green, pressure to push for green offices, or just an excuse to cut costs, game manuals started to disappear, and rather quickly at that. Since March of 2010, most physical PC games have had digital manuals, and Ubisoft took initiative in terms of console games with Sean White skateboarding, of all things being the first to have a completely digital manual in October that same year. This move was massive in paper reduction. For every one ton of game manuals produced, around 13 trees were used, 6,000 pounds of CO2 was emitted into the air, and around 15,000 gallons of wastewater was run out of factories into fragile ecosystems. Since alone these numbers can seem kind of overwhelming, let's put some of them into perspective. Annually, America produces around 254 million tons of waste, or the equivalent weight of over 1 million blue whales and produces around 15 million tonne worth of CO2 emissions, approximately 84,000 of those blue whales. It's hard to say just how many game manuals there are per tonne of paper used, since there was no real average size, ranging from 10 pages up to 50. The numbers are too wide, and how many sheets of paper alone is hard to approximate. But I'll just say, this move by the game industry has reduced a lot of waste. Despite being a significant blow to how fun it was to buy physical games, the trade-off seems worth it to me. All of this was a positive step forward, Deforestation worldwide was declining, but as it turns out, time is a circle and we're doomed to repeat ourselves. <sighs> However, that's neither here nor there. So the games industry collectively stood up and enacted actual, tangible change. No matter the means, the ends are all that mattered. So that's it, right? Climate change solved? <laughs> well, no. There's still the plastic elephant in the room. Most game packaging uses polypropylene plastic, otherwise known as plastic number five. If you've ever wondered what that little recycle symbol with a number inside it means, this is it. PP. <laughs> or number five, is one of the most common kinds of consumer grade plastic available. In 2010, five billion pounds of this one kind of plastic alone was produced, with only about 1% being recovered in post-consumer use. And in 2017, the demand in North America alone was around one billion pounds. In terms of recyclable plastic, number five is on the better end, as it can be burnt down and remade into other consumer items. But with such small turnaround numbers, it's really hard to call it a good impact on the environment. Coupled with its extremely high melting point, the process to make it reusable also causes some issues. If all plastics were created equal, that is, their size, density, and most importantly, their color, this would be a much different conversation. They could all be recycled together if that were the case. For the sake of brand differentiation, at this current time, Sony and Microsoft have blue and green cases respectively, making the process that much more difficult. Since the market resale value on those particular kinds of melted down plastics is significantly lower than those of clear polymers, not all of this is to blame solely on video game packaging, of course. Polypropylene is used in a variety of household items, but cutting down the demand in any supply chain can have a massive ripple effect across all industries and production styles. There is, thankfully, a company stepping up to the plate and issuing a very real and tangible solution to this that keeps the satisfaction of owning physical media intact. Football Manager 2020 will be the first, at least mass-produced, physical media to be as eco-friendly as possible. Developer Sports Interactive, with the help of their publishing partner Sega, have started an initiative out of frustration that companies weren't doing enough on their part to cut down waste, and it's like nothing the industry has ever really seen. Using a low-density polyethylene shrink wrap that is, at least on the plastic scale, one of the safest to recycle, packaging is 100% recycled cardboard cutting out the majority of plastics used in-game manufacturing, printed with vegetable ink, recycled paper for the manual, and even provides a location for discs to be sent and disposed of safely. Sports Interactive Studio Manager Miles Jacobson says this will save around 20 tons of plastic per run of around 350,000 units sold. While this all sounds like a dream, there are always setbacks, like an increase in the cost of production being about 30% or around 25 US cents per unit, but it's a very small price to pay. And Jacobson said this idea wasn't just for them and wants all companies to step up and consider using their new means of production. Football Manager is a fairly successful franchise, but just imagine the global impact if companies like Rockstar, Bethesda, and even the first parties would have if this new means was adopted and the ripples across all forms of entertainment this would have. I mean, we're in an age where a physical copy of PC games is just a glorified CD key in a box that is nothing but unnecessary and useless plastic being sent out into the world. 
I did find little bits and pieces of EA making a bio box for PC games back in 2010, but I couldn't really find anything substantial to talk about outside of the fact that it existed. I understand this is a much bigger task than just removing a game manual, since it ultimately has an impact on the bottom line, but if mass production of plastic continues, there will no longer be a bottom line to keep count of. The green initiative doesn't really stop there. Everyone's favorite company to hate, EA, has one whole page on their website about steps forward they've taken into being more environmentally friendly. Whether this is all for show or not doesn't really matter considering any step forward is progress no matter how underhanded it may be. According to the page, EA uses certified print suppliers, biodegradable air pillows for shipping to save around 7,000 pounds of paper per year, and eliminating around 750 square feet of shrink wrap for pallets through the use of banding materials. What struck me the most though, was the amount of waste reduction through the switch to higher digital sales over the last five years, assumedly through their paid subscription service, Origin Access. They're touting an impressive 20.3 million pounds in saved plastic, 4.1 million pounds in paper inserts, and 53 million discs. Neat, right? Well, here's the kicker. Digital media requires a lot of power, from server hosting to just electricity to use and acquire. And with more targeted focus on not only games, but all entertainment becoming subscription or streaming based, that use of non-renewable energy is getting worse. With that said, I think this video has been depressing enough for me to not only make, but I'm sure it has been for you to watch too, so we'll come back to that another day for more fun on how the games industry is killing our planet. So this video was pretty grim, but thankfully there are legitimate steps forward being taken. And with Football Manager 2020's new solution to a more eco-friendly form of production, given the size of that franchise and Sega being the publishing partner, there is hope for this to become a trend in the future. Are companies expected to have a sudden turnaround in how their games are produced? Definitely not. It takes an estimated 18 months to shift the means of production for high-end corporations. And that's when they decide to take the step. But it is at least a glimmer of hope on the horizon. I want to leave you with this, however. If you're looking to reduce your impact on the environment with your game purchasing, then consider buying secondhand. Or if you really want that brand new game, despite its significant flaws, maybe consider going digital with it. It's important to consider what I open this video with. All those discarded game cases sitting in landfill or buried deep underground. Any small change to help alleviate that would go a long way. If you are too set in your ways, maybe hold some accountability towards developers and their manufacturing process. Let's see if we can get more companies like Sports Interactive printing their games with eco-friendly boxes. Some companies have come forward in the last week about their digital footprint, which is huge and shouldn't be understated, but there's always more to be done and can't stop with a single step. I hope you, well enjoyed might be pushing it, but gained something from this first episode of the new series. There are a lot of topics I'd like to cover. Not because I want to ruin gaming for everyone, far from it. I've dedicated a lot of my time talking about my love of the medium on this channel, but I do think there is a lot of accountability that needs to be held towards companies, now more than ever. So I hope you'll join me in future videos in the Ethics of Buying Games series.